Hey you guys, it's me again. I wanted to make a video on how to use flashcards effectively. So if you're anything like me, I definitely had to write stuff down. I like to draw pictures. I like to make sense of things. And so I definitely am a hands-on visual learner. So again, writing stuff down, drawing pictures, being able to visualize things really helps me with understanding and remembering information. So flashcards have been truly effective in my ability to remember and comprehend and do well on my tests in the future or tests, sorry. And um, I want to show you an effective method on using flashcards because if we're honest, most people use flashcards, but they're ineffective. And what they do is on the front side, they will have the word, the date, a formula, whatever it is they're trying to remember. And on the back side, all they have is the definition or maybe how to solve that formula. So that is not what I want you to do because what you're doing in essence is uh, relying on your rogue memory. And if you look at Bloom's taxonomy, the bottom of Bloom's taxonomy is just remembering information. But the higher you move up on Bloom's taxonomy, you are comprehending the, well, one you're remembering, but you're comprehending the information you're applying that information and you're sitting there and you're criticizing and analyzing, how can I make this better? So your job as a student is to move out of the bottom of Bloom's taxonomy and start comprehending and applying the information that's given to you. So hopefully this is one method for you to move up Bloom's. Um, so let's get started. So I have made this giant flashcard out of print and paper, but uh, you get the, the picture, right? It's on the front side, you have this word, date, formula, and on the bottom, what I put is um, the word picture, and I circled it. So again, most of us are visual learners. So what I encourage you to do is, you know, write down the word, the date, the formula, whatever it is, and draw a picture of it. What is something that, um, what is some kind of visual cue that you could use to help you remember the information? So if I turn it around, what I want you to do on this flash card that you make is number one through five, okay? Number one, sorry, I'm gonna grab this differently. Number one is a definition. What is a definition word by word that your instructor gave you or that the book is saying, okay? Write that down. And again, I don't encourage you to try, try to remember the definition word by word. Um, number two. Okay, do you know every word within the definition? How many times have you been told by your teachers to try to figure out what a word means while you're reading? And if you can't figure it out, how is it used in the context of that sentence? And for me, I struggled with that. I Even if I thought I was right and I was right, I was still lacked the confidence because I'm like, oh, I don't know if it's 100% right. And so if you don't know something, how the heck are you supposed to remember it? Okay. So within number two on your flashcard, you are going to write down the words within that definition that you do not understand. Number three, okay, you are going to reword that definition. We do not talk dictionary. So I don't expect you to try to remember a definition if it's not brought down to your level, whatever that level is. It may be even higher than the definition, but most of us, again, aren't a walking, talking Webster's Dictionary. So reword uh, the definition uh, so that you understand it. Number four, I think this is, I think all of them are important, one through five, but number four for me is a real biggie. Um, number four are associations. So what are associations? Um, being able to pair information with something you already know. So the goal here is you already have all of your long-term memory in your brain, right? And you are trying to store this new information given to you into your long-term memory. One of the easiest ways to do that, other than creating visual cues, is by creating associations. So can you pair this new information that you're given with something you already know? It, sounds hard but it's actually very easy and it could be silly I encourage it to be silly because if you think about all the things that you remember in your life most of us remember the high spots and the low spots we don't remember everything that happened in the middle because it doesn't stick out for us 
So the sillier the association that you can make, the better off you're going to be. What I also like to put in this association area is where I found the information. Did I get it in lecture? And if I got it in lecture, what day? Uh, you guys should all be labeling your lectures notes with the date on top. So um, if you are finding this in the book, I would put the book information in there too. All right, and the last one, number five, is test question, okay? I want you to create a test question. Hopefully you've had a quiz or two, midterm, whatever it is with your instructor so far, and how are they creating your test questions? Are they using true and false, multiple choice, essay questions in there? So I want you to kind of mirror their testing, their test questions on this flashcard. So um, being able to create a question and then answer it is gonna be key here. So once you have your flashcard done, let's say you're taking four classes, you're in intro to sociology, you're taking health 102, you're taking an English class and a math course. What I encourage you to do is create your flashcards every chapter and rubber band them according to chapter so that way you're nice and organized. But then also on Monday, um, let's say you grab five flashcards from each class. So in total, you have 20 flashcards. What I recommend is that your goal by the end of Monday is to remember all 20 of those flashcards. And it's not that hard, you guys. All you need to do is every time you have any kind of downtime, you're busting out your flashcards. Literally, you could put them in your back pocket, whatever it is, it, you make sure it's easy access for you. So if you're riding the bus, guess what? Flashcards. You're walking to class, flashcards. And what, while you're studying those flashcards, what I'm going to encourage you to do is look at your flashcard and say everything out loud. That way you could see it and hear it at the same time. We know that if you use different ways of acquiring information through your senses, the more likely you are to remember it. So again, saying it out loud and seeing it. So once you have said it um, and you've seen it, um, what I want you to then do is close your eyes and then visualize everything. Okay, the definition of this word is, and then work on the backside. Okay, so if you did not remember that flashcard when you closed your eyes, then you got to keep working on that. Um, but by the end of the day, you should have done that for all 20 cards. So that was Monday. On Tuesday, what you're then going to do is grab 20 new flashcards. Again, five for each class. So that way you're studying for every class every single day. A lot of students tend to study the night before or two days before a midterm or a final, and we know that causes a lot of stress, but if you gradually study every day for your classes using this note card method, um, I can almost guarantee that you are going to do much better on your tests, your quizzes, midterm finals, and you're going to remember the information. Um, it's almost a guarantee if you use this effectively. So there are some outliers, um, however, I've used this method for a long time and it's been truly helpful and I hope that you use it too. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I would be happy to address any questions or concerns that you have and I hope this video was helpful and have a wonderful day. Bye!